At birth, a woman has one to two million follicles, but when she comes to around 37 years of age, the number of follicles drop down to 25,000. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Surakshit Badina and welcome to another video. In this particular one, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about premature ovarian failure, also known as primary ovarian insufficiency. I'm going to be discussing what might be the possible causes and how can we diagnose this condition and what are the treatment options. We have to look at premature ovarian failure and primary ovarian insufficiency as two separate entities. Premature ovarian failure is when the ovarian failure has already happened, which means the patient has no more follicles which are being produced. Whereas in primary ovarian insufficiency, the patient does release the follicles, but unfortunately it becomes infrequent at the same time the patient has very, very low menstrual bleeding. Coming to the causes of primary ovarian failure, the most important ones are the genetic causes like the fragile X syndrome and also the Turner syndrome. Both of these, the patients have very low AMH at the same time they also go into primary ovarian insufficiency than their normal counterparts. Patients who have undergone previous surgery either on the fallopian tube or the ovary during the procedure there might be some kind of destruction to the blood supply to the ovary. This might also cause primary ovarian insufficiency. Endometriosis is another condition which can also destroy the follicles and cause primary ovarian insufficiency. And patients who have autoimmune disorders are also prone to having primary ovarian insufficiency. What are the most important signs and symptoms of a patient who is suffering from primary ovarian insufficiency? The patient will have very less amount of bleeding or she might have only spotting during her menstruation. Some of them might not have any menstruation at all. Some of the patients who are suffering from primary ovarian insufficiency might have hot flushes. They might have joint pains. Patients can have cardiovascular disease problems. Patient can also have mood swings. They can have vaginal dryness. And most patients who are having primary ovarian insufficiency during the reproductive age groups will be suffering from infertility. Now, how do we diagnose a patient who has primary ovarian failure? Number one, we first go ahead and do some of the blood tests which are AMH, which is also known as the anti mullerian hormone. This will give us a brief idea about the ovarian reserve of the patient. The other blood test what we can perform is called as the FSH, also known as the follicle stimulating hormone. And usually patients who are suffering from premature ovarian failure have very, very high FSH levels. Coming to the ultrasound features of a patient who is suffering from primary ovarian failure, the patient might have very small ovaries with or without follicles in them. Even if they have follicles, the number of follicles would be very, very less. In some patients, due to the low levels of estrogen and progesterone, the uterine size also will be shrunk. Before we dive into the treatment options, I would like you to understand that this is a very, very sensitive issue and has a big psychological impact on the women. We need to deal with this condition very carefully. It's always better to have their family involved in the scenario and make sure that you counsel the parents first before you counsel the patient. This condition can also cause depression in the patient, so it's always important to counsel the patient carefully and a multidisciplinary approach is always better. The treatment options include either HRT treatment, also known as hormone replacement therapy, or at the same time, the patient might just take an oral contraceptive pills if she is able to tolerate them. And for any woman who is suffering from premature ovarian failure, the first thing what they have to do is once they cross the age of 20, they have to freeze their follicles as early as possible. And most girls who have these kinds of menstrual issues, they might think that it's something that they should not discuss with their parents, but if a woman is having scanty flow or very less amount of menstruation, she has to bring it to the knowledge of her gynecologist and her parents as early as possible. The commonest adjuvant the patient tries before IVF or ICSI treatment is pre-treatment with testosterone and in various studies that show some good results. The patient can also take growth hormone injectables which will be a subcutaneous injection for the patient on a daily basis until the time of egg collection which has also helped in some of the patients. I will be making another video on the cryopreservation of eggs and how it is helping women in the 21st century. If you want to see that video, do let me know in the comments down below. And if you did enjoy the video so far, go ahead, leave a like, leave a thumbs up on this video. This would really mean a lot to us and it will definitely help us make more videos like this in the future. But what if the patient is not having primary ovarian insufficiency and she's having primary ovarian failure? Then what are our options? In these patients who have no follicles, 
platelet rich plasma has shown some positive results. What are the take home points? If you feel that your menstrual cycles are very scanty and that the amount of flow is very less, make sure you inform your parents or your gynecologist immediately. The earlier you find out that you have primary ovarian insufficiency, the better it is because you will be able to save the follicles for a later date. This process is called as cryopreservation. If you are suffering from premature ovarian failure, which means that you have no follicles on both the ovaries, then you can try adjuvant therapies like PRP, testosterone, amongst other things. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please go ahead, leave a like, leave a thumbs up on this video. If you have not, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And for more such videos, if you want to get notified early, go ahead and press the bell icon. And if you want to know a little bit more about premature ovarian failure, if you want to know whether you are suffering from premature ovarian failure and you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below and one of our team members will get back to you immediately. So until the next one guys, see you and have a great day.